crouchy posture. Our butt is tucked under, so as if the pelvic bone is flared up. Our knees are relaxed. When we're ready to begin, we slowly drain the weight off of our left foot, put it all on its right foot. Elevate our heel till we get it to the toe. Then lift it off the ground, put your toe down, and slowly bring down your heel. At the same time, your hands rotate to the middle of your thighs. On the up movement, we use our back muscles to push up. At shoulder level, we reverse the process. We tuck down our wrists, we drop our elbows and our shoulders, we flex our knees. The left hand holds the bottom of our ball below our navel, the right hand holds the top of the ball, and our footing is now on a T-step. The weight is still on the back foot, which is your right foot. Okay. Slowly drain the weight off your left foot. Lift up your heel. Bring it to its toe. Off the ground. Toe down. Slowly, 50-50, heel down. Hands rotate to the middle of the thighs. We take a deep breath in as we elevate both hands. At shoulder level, we exhale on the down movement, tucking our wrists, tucking our elbow, dropping our shoulders. Left hand remains to the bottom of our navel, right hand on the top, as if we're holding an air ball on a T-step. Okay, one more turn. On a T-step, holding your ball. We're parting the horse's knee. Step out with your heel, shift your hand, rotate, stretch, serve someone your heel. Sit back, out, shift your weight, hold your ball. Heel, shift your hand, part the horse's knee. Sit back, go out, shift your weight, hold your ball. Heel, open the knees, rotate, stretch. Half step forward, hold your ball. Sit on your back. Foot as you rotate the ball, lift up your hand, lift up your foot. White crane spreads its wings on its toes. Okay, I think you're ready for Tai Chi walk. You never are in the same plane this way. You're out here because why? You want to keep the span so that you can open your knee and rotate and stretch out. If you are in the same plane, which you should not be doing, and I shouldn't be doing and showing you, is that I'm too squished up, my knees are hurting me when I open, and I have no room to, to rotate and stretch out. Okay, let's make sure that we try to recall that as we do part of the horses a few times. All right, on a T-step. Out with your heel, away from the back foot, shift your hands, open your knees, rotate, stretch. Sit back, out, hold your ball, shift your weight, heel and hands, away from the back foot, part the horse's knee. Sit back, out, hold your ball, heel, rotate, Stretch. Half step forward, hold your ball. Rotate or spin your ball to the left. Lift up your hand, lift up your foot, pop your left hand. White crane, spread your wings. Okay, this, um, this time left hand is on the bottom, okay? And you're on a side step so that you can see my hands. When I step out, you know that this is the motion. This is the motion. It cannot be out. It cannot be out and then here. It has to be two, two tasks done simultaneously. Out with your heel, shift your weight, shift your hand, park the horse's knee. You center your front hand to the center of your chest and you give it a serve, you actually serve someone. 
before you open the flower. Just the way you do the other parting of the horse's mane, I shift my hand, I come out, I center my body, I cock my hand to serve or open my flower. Last time, I sit back, I come out, I shift my weight, I shift my weight, I hold my ball, I put out my hand, I serve, and I cough. And my chest, my hand, my serving is centering me. To make that clear, I'll do it a little wrong. I come out, I come this way, and I serve like this. You see how awkward I am? My chest is out this way, and my knees are cuckoo because I cannot do this. I need to shift my, ro rotate my hips and my waist to center this way. Okay, let's try that. All right. Um, we're on a T-step. We're parting the horse's knee. Out with your heel, out with your hand. Serve. Sit back, out, shift your weight, hold your ball, heel, hands, get ready to center, serve. Sit back, out, shift your weight, hold your ball, heel, hands, serve. We do it three times, but we're going to do it more than three times as a drill. Out, hold your ball. Heel, hands open the knees, rotate, serve and finish. Sit back, out, hold your ball, shift your weight, heel, rotate, serve. Sit back, out, hold your ball, heel, hands open, serve or open your thumb. Sit back, out. Hold your ball. Heel, hands, open the knees, rotate, serve. Make sure that cable is drilled down through my middle of my head, through my downtown, which is inside in the area of my belly button. If we should not obey that cable and we go down here, we are wobbly and we are not going to be as balanced as if we were back here in our posture. Can we try that? And on to white crane and spreads its foot forward on the ball. You're going to spin or rotate the ball to the left. As you sit back on your back foot, you lift up your hand, your weight is on the back, you cock your left hand, you lift up your left foot, you place it down. What's the last part? I'm using my left hand to stay calm my right hand to center me. My hips, my, my navel is towards my center, not here, okay? I'm tucking my butt under. My cable is right there, but keeping me straight. Half step forward, hold my ball. I'm on my tiptoe, my weight is not in the back yet. When I start to rotate, I sit back on my heel almost 100%, then I can move my front foot, cock my left hand mm -hmm. for my balance strength, and then set. Okay, let's try. Mm -hmm. Last part of the horse's mane. Make sure you have your tight feet posture. Make sure your right hand is cocked. Make sure your front hand is centered. Half step forward, hold your ball. Rotate mm -hmm. to the left. As you sit back on your back foot, lift up your hand, cock your left hand, lift up your foot, bring it down on its toes, set. One more time. The left hand is cocked, that means it cannot drop this way, it cannot just do that. It has to say cock. Give me a cock. Yes, okay. Now, the, the top hand or the right hand comes up and the baby finger draws an imaginary line and cuts to the edge of my shoulder. And it should be slightly past the forehead, slightly above. Find your forehead. Bring it out, bring it up, and turn it. And that's good. Okay, of course, we always start with the T-step and the ball to come out this way. We do it 
three times. In Rashi, after we do our white cream, we drop our front foot. As we drop our front foot, the weight remains on the back, and we bisect our body using our navel as the halfway point. So I don't cross that navel. But this time, our torso moves and looks at our top and the side. White crane spreads its wings. Okay, if you have a white crane, you're on the back, your weight is on the back, your left hand is caught, your toe, left foot hardly has any weight. Drop your front foot, bisect your body, bring both hands back, the top hand is higher, which is your right hand. One more time, several more times. White crane spreads its Drop your front foot, bisect your body, look back at your back hand as high. This is white cream. When you drop your front foot, it's obviously drop. But you drop, you turn, look where I'm looking. What happened to my hips and waist? They followed my hand. Okay. How far back does your hand extend? The hands do not extend this way, because why? My knees are taking a beating going this way. I can only go back, not halfway, uh, not uh, a 90, but slightly more, but not this way. So here's my 90, a little bit more, maybe 100, 110, okay? The top hand is higher. You notice that this hand, the palm is looking, you're looking at your palm. The other hand is the opposite. It's against, your palm is against your body. Can we try that too? White crane spreads its wings. Drop your front foot, bisect your body. Swirl back, look at your back hand that's higher at that 110 degree. All right? Three or four things happen. First thing that happens is that Top hand comes to your ear. Give me this motion. Open, ear, open, ear, open. Now, as you do that, the left hand, wiggle your left hand so you know where your left hand is. It starts to go down. Do this, do this. Now do ear hand, out, ear hand, out. Ear, hand, out. Get it? How many things go on so far? Here's the third and the fourth. Ear, hand, heel. Ear, hand, heel. Three things. Ear, hand, heel, turn, brush. Okay. Ear, hand, heel, turn your body, center. So there's more than four or five things coming on because our neck turns, our eyes change, our head turns. Ear, heel, hand, turn, brush your knee. Okay, get good at it because you're going to go from the other side too. Ear, hand, open the knees, rotate, brush your knee. Ear, hand, heel, neck, eyes, brush your knee. Ready for the challenge. Sit back, pivot out. Shift your weight, look at your back hand. Same thing. Ear, heel, hand, turn your torso, turn your face, change your glance. Touching posture. Sit back. Pivot out. Shift your weight. Look at your back hand as high. Bring it to your ear. Set up your heel. Set up your hand. Turn your neck. Turn your face. Turn your torso. Brush your knee. Here's a drill. Sit back. Out. Shift your weight. Left hand higher. Ear, heel, hand, face. Brush your knee. Sit back. Pivot out. Back hand, 
and bring it here. Here, sit up. Here, mm -hmm. sit up. Parting of the horse's knee. The movements are the same. The hand structure on the faces are different. But another movement called grasping of the bird's tail, where the, the hands are a little different. Instead of serving, we come, flip it up, and we pull it down. We're pulling, grasping the bird's tail. In serving, or parting of the horse's mane, it's done this way, and then it's out. In grasping of the bird's tail, the palm of the hand faces you, and then it Okay, so we want to make a distinguishing um, feature when we learn, because there are very, they, they can get cloudy and they can get confused. It's also my head and neck that goes with that upward foot. When the upward foot is pivoted, we shift our weight because we cannot advance the other foot until it's weightless. When it's weightless and we put it down, we don't just plunk it down. We use the muscles of our heel to hold that position as we open our knees, we rotate our hips, waist, torso, as well as shoulders to head and neck to stretch out this way, making sure our knee is not, does not have a buckle in it. If it has a buckle in it, our posture is not correct. If it's straight, the posture, there's a tendency for the posture to become out because you want to put, you're putting so much emphasis on that knee that you know that has to be straight. But you can still do that by making sure your butt is tucked under. Once you forget that your butt is not tucked under, you will have that slanted or sliding board effect. Okay? So I can see it. You may not feel it. But the more I call attention to it and the more you see yourself, say, in the mirror or whatever, you can probably get so we begin to detect what I'm getting at. All right. Now, besides coming out away from this foot, you can never come out this way. You have to come out this way. You know that things happen uh, simultaneously. You know that when you step out, this hand has to come out. This is the opening of the knee. This is the rotating. This is the stretching. This is the center. The center. You cannot come out and do it this way because my chest is not in alignment to my center hand, okay?